And they're just like my wife, just like my wife. You've got to keep challenged. You really do. And fortunately, during the first 10 years of the existence of this place, that wasn't a problem because something new was happening all the time. New types of shows were being developed. And it was easy to get people excited because you had a little group that was different each time that you could get excited. You've got to continue to look for new people and challenge them, uh, but challenge them in exciting ways. Try to get them involved. It's fun. It's fun. I wish I had the energy to get back into the harness, but you saw what I stumble up here and sit in the kingbird seat and uh, pretend to know it all. I don't, but I do know organizations and I do know the history of this wonderful place. And it is such a wonderful place. It's added so much to the history and to the enjoyment of living in this area. Am I preaching too long? Say a little bit about um, how Harriet's enthusiasm and her work itself promotes as an artist. Oh yeah. Why this was so successful for her? My wife Harriet was a wonderful, wonderful woman. If she hadn't been, of course, I wouldn't have married her. You know that. <laughs> she went to school here at Ohio University and majored in art. Back in the days when you made a canvas about this big and you laid out this, this still life here in front of you and you painted it in the classroom. But when she came, when she, uh, when she finished college and decided that she had to continue being an artist, she would drag me off to New York or Washington or places like that just to visit museums, art, art galleries. And I'd get tired of it. I, I mean, she'd drag me all over New York and Washington visiting gallery after gallery. And she traveled off to across the country visiting galleries and she went to Europe visiting galleries, including uh, Russia, by the way. I didn't go with her. Uh, but. This was her soul, her artwork was her soul. And she was, she came of age, you might say, at a time when there, when great abstract paintings were being produced in New York and elsewhere. Huge paintings, as big as, uh, as 20 feet tall and, and uh, 10 feet wide, things like that, huge paintings. And she fell in love with the style. And uh, so these may look big to you, but they were much smaller than many of the things that were being, being produced then and that she produced. She found a ready market. She was, a, she was a salesperson for her own art. She was never satisfied with just having a show. And most artists have a problem. They may produce wonderful art, but they have no idea how to sell it, how to find how to find the guy, the person that is, can't resist that particular piece of art. Well, she used to pick out and select an audience and just invite them as a small group to see her shows at home. Uh, she'd invite 20 people that she knew ought to have her art. And then she would, <laughs> and then she would throw a party for those 20 people cocktails and all that good stuff and stage her these paintings all over the interior walls of our house in Columbus and also the outer, exterior walls of our house in Columbus and the huge fence that she put around our, our uh, yard in Columbus, huge fence. But it made a perfect background for these kind of paintings, you see, so she could have no trouble at all displaying 20, 25 of her paintings around our house with a selected audience of guys who had big, big office spaces where you could show this kind of art, see? Where you ought to have this kind of art. She would have an audience, a selected audience of public institutions, banks and, and uh, educational facilities around the university and places like that that ought to have art. She selected her audience of buyers 
Well, she approached this particular project here the same way. She shoved me around terribly. She made me do things that uh, I thought, well, that sounds crazy. But uh, what a woman, my. Uh, I hated to lose her, I really did. I had a real rough year that first year she was gone. Real rough year, until I began to meet other beautiful women, I recognized then I found the world's full of beautiful women. <laughs> if you don't believe me, let's look around. But anyway, uh, it, was, it was a great, a great time in my life because she involved me not only in, in moving her artwork in going around the world to see good art, but in institutions like this, in endeavors like this, projects like this wonderful dairy barn. Uh, if it hadn't been for the women, I guarantee you the dairy barn would never have been in existence as an art center. Even though there were about five of us that were men that were interested, none of us were dry, driven by this idea. But these women were. And believe me, when they put their foot in your back, you move. You move. What else you want to know? 